Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, this video is some of the work we've done on the central uh, garden plot, and it's C and I uh, doing harvesting of the banana peppers and the San Marzano tomatoes. And, uh, and I thought what I'd try and accomplish a couple of things in this video while you can see some of the time-lapse footage of me going through and cutting off the uh, banana peppers right at the surface of the ground level or just below the surface, taking the plant, plants back over to the utility vehicle, which is Pepe there, pulling off the, uh, the banana peppers and putting them in clean buckets, five gallon buckets, and then those buckets go inside for Thea to take care of. Uh, she's also harvesting the San Marzano tomatoes uh, throughout this process, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Last week when I posted the video, and the garden plot update, I, uh, I asked for people to leave comments on how things were going with their, with their gardens and all. And I want to believe really uh, left a, a great, some great comments on how things were going in her gardens. Uh, she said, my tomatoes were lost by disease in August, and that's really an important point. So I pr replaced them with collards and kale. I was growing on my back. Uh, the next year, I'm changing the tomatoes that I will grow, as well as the zucchini and yellow squash, which barely produced. I tried growing a second batch of zucchini and yellow squash, but it didn't produce. Uh, my lemon cucumbers did well, but not as well as I would have liked, but I got a good amount of them. Next year, I'm going to grow the lemon and a different kind of cucumber. Uh, I got my first sweet potato harvest and am so thrilled about that that my first ginger harvest and that my first ginger harvest. I've had so many cayennes and Chinese long beans. They are doing amazing still. I learned a lot. I, I learned not to grow eggplant anymore because my family doesn't really want to eat it. I learned that I want to grow more okra, sweet potatoes, and green peppers, and to concentrate on what I can put away for the winter. Those are, at first, thank you very much, I want to believe. I think that was exactly what I'm looking for, for, for comments from everybody. Uh, and, uh, I, and I would just appreciate everyone's comments. Uh, one of the things that that I try to do is break up our gardening and farming into various phases. It'll all start off in the winter months when we're uh, when I'm starting to use the um, the pl well p planting up the uh, starting seeds inside the work area, and uh, and we use 72 cell flats and we grow them during the end of end of winter months and early early spring. And then we go through the next phase, which is potting up some of the tomatoes and peppers because they're outgrowing, the roots are outgrowing the, the 72 cell uh, confined area. Then uh, after potting them up, then we go through a hardening off phase uh, when, when the weather's warming up so we can get them hardened off. Then we go through a direct seeding and transplanting phase. And I made a video about those, those processes in the past as well. Uh, then the growing phase uh, that tends to be the most uh, the most laid back or easiest part for us throughout the season. However, I've mentioned before it's so important to do your daily walks and to really uh, to observe and take notes, take pictures, uh, and learn as much as we can through the process, as I want to believe is is just demonstrated, and as well as many of you who have commented on videos in the past. Right now I'm going through in the garden here, uh, I'm cleaning up a lot of the debris because I've fallen twice on these tomatoes so far this season. Uh, during the, these couple of days, uh, cleaning up the, uh, the tomatoes. Uh, we, we grow so many tomatoes, you see there's so much more. So all this biomass that's above the ground, we're, we're composting. Uh, and you'll see in a little while, I'll collect some, some tomatoes that are fully ripe and not, no, not showing any uh, mold infestation in them. And I'll be putting those in a bucket for seed saving. Uh, and Thea will, through her processing of all the, uh, the pepper plants, the banana peppers, 
she'll save all the seeds and I hopefully will make a video about some of the trials I'm doing with the various fermenting processes for seed saving as well. One of the things I'm doing in the video right now is going through removing the rebar, uh, stacking the rebar right behind where the camera is located at this point, and I'm taking that, the uh, cages off, pulling the tomatoes out of the cages, putting the tomato cages in the back of Pepe and driving those out into the uh, forest area. Uh, in the forest area we have a location where we can keep these two foot uh, uh, tomato cages in place. The rebar will go inside of the work area for storage over the winter months and, uh, and one of the things I'll do is go through and take all of the tomato plants as well as the tomatoes that have fallen on the ground, put them in Mini-Me, that's the small B2601 Kubota tractor, and bring that up to be composted. So it's a, it, it, this takes us a full two days to do this process. And this, this whole phase is the, uh, is the harvesting, which is very labor intensive. So transplanting is fairly, here I am collecting the tomatoes that I'm going to be using for seed saving. Just going through picking up really nice ones. This is the next morning, Sunday morning. I'm out here uh, trying to get further along. I've taken one row down and I've got two thirds of the other row uh, set as well. So um, so during this phase of, of harvesting, it's very labor intensive. Thea will do a, quite a bit of the harvesting and then uh, we'll be processing, cutting up, and, and uh, freezing all of the, uh, the produce that we're saving so that during the winter months they be, can, can get canned and all. The herbs are full in, in the uh, work area at this point, drying. Uh, the, um, the onions are just about finished drying. Uh, we've got beans out in the sugar shack uh, in their racks drying at this point. So it's a really super busy time of year but it's really important for us to learn as we go through. So every one of these phases, I try to learn each season. So this is a harvest and cleanup phase right now that I'm going through. And then I'll continue on after the, the harvest and cleanup. And I was prep these, these uh, three beds because I've got two tomato beds and one uh, banana pepper bed that I'm going to use the tilther and just slightly disturb the very superficial uh, surface of the uh, permanent raised beds. Uh, they've been compacted down from walking on them uh, or from you know everything that's going on right now. And uh, so one of the things I do is I'll pull all of the uh, staples out of the weed mats, pull them out of the drip tape as well, fold the weed mats down into the walking paths and uh, then take the drip tape and pull it off of the center of the uh, beds and put it down into the walkways as well. And, uh, and then I can run the tilther down over the, uh, the surface of each one of these permanent raised beds. Just, and I'm just excoriating the surface just enough so that when I set the seeds down, when the water goes on, the seeds don't roll off of the hard surface. It's like just gently tickling the surface with a rake. You know, and don't want to really destroy the, the structure. When we put these tomatoes and peppers in, we use mycorrhizal fungi to inoculate the roots when we transplanted them into the season. So I want to leave all the roots in the soil so that, so that the, uh, so all the microbes can feed on those roots. And as a result of not inoculating the, the um, what I'm gonna put down is more mustard seed, they're going to send their roots down, they'll make contact with the mycorrhizal fungi. And so the whole uh, subsurface, the, the subterranean surface, the biomass down there will continue to grow and also at the end of the season when I put the tarp down that will help to help break down the biomass that's above the ground level as well. But one of the things I've learned in the past when I'm going through and like I'm shoveling up all the tomatoes right now that are on there and filling up the bucket with, with the tomatoes, one thing is when you're working with permanent raised beds the you can slip really easily and I've fallen on my butt here twice and uh, and it wasn't pleasant um, and you land in tomato soup basically. 
So that's one thing. You want to be careful so they don't get hurt through this process. We also want to make sure that when we cut the tomato plants or the pepper plants off, we want to cut them off right just you know, like a millimeter or two below the surface of the, of the raised bed itself. We want to leave the roots in the bed and we don't want to disturb the bed, let the structure of the soil be maintained. Uh, but also leave the roots there so the microorganisms can break those down. All this tomato biomass here and the, all the vines uh, from the uh, bush plant are going out and, and going into the compost pile. And you'll see a little bit of me going out there and doing that in a couple of moments. Uh, but this is it. We want to get these beds. So now there's lots of dry debris that's on the surface of the weed mats. So the next thing I'm going to do is come through with the uh, battery operated, uh, I guess most people will call them a leaf blower and all, and I clean a lot of this material off. Uh, there are places wherever, wherever I've stepped on tomatoes, where there's plenty of them, and there's the dry leaf matter there, it creates this uh, mud pie effect. Okay, so now we're taking uh, Mini-Me out to the compost pile. I'm going to go ahead and immediately cover up all of this, the seeds and the vines which I've been doing throughout the process here and just getting it all covered up and getting all the microbial activity and the thermal composting system to start working on those heavy duty vines right off the bat as well. Here I'm removing the staples from the weed mats and pulling the weed mats back to the center. Getting ready to run the tilter here in a couple of minutes. Uh, the drip tape on the left side of the screen for the, for the one closest to the workshop there that tape has already been pulled out because that was one that I had a leak in uh, when I put the tomato cages in and uh, I discovered it afterwards so I had to run the line through the base of the tomato cages which slowed things down. So I know from this process I learned that I have to check the, uh, the efficacy, how well the drip tapes are working before I put the tomato cages on top of the um, of the beds as well. Running the tilter down here now, just slightly disturbing the surface of the soil. Uh, going down here back and forth, just enough so when I set the seed down in the next uh, fit part of this process, then what we're doing is we're allowing those seeds to, to set. It takes about 20, uh, 48 to 72 hours for the uh, roots of these mustard uh, plants to go ahead and emerge so they germinate really well. This is from the True Leaf Market where I got this cover crop and yes I do put my cover crops in very thick because we have such a short short period of time before the snow flies here and I want to feed all the microorganisms in these beds as much as possible. So now I'm putting the drip tape back down the center of each one of these beds. This is the one I had to remove from the first bed there. Hooked it up. Now I go out back and I grab a hose and uh, got the hose here now. And now I'm going to, uh, I started off on shower here, which really doesn't work that well. And then I immediately switched it over to a fan uh, level. I want as little pressure hitting the surface of the soil. It may look like I'm really pounding it here, but I'm really using a very gentle, it's a windy day, uh, but uh, I want to get those, those seeds nice and moist. So I go over the beds twice at this point. Uh, I leave the drip irrigation on, although it isn't going to get all of the seeds at the margins. This was set up for single row crop feeding and all. So this system works out pretty well. Uh, I checked today, so we've got nice little roots on these plants and uh, I'm pretty happy with them at this point. So if you found this video of value, please give us a thumbs up. Thank you for your comments and questions. I really appreciate it. And by all means, folks, have a super fantastic day and stay safe. Bye-bye now.